Bit of an update for our move to Spain. Uh, what can I say? It's been a difficult month. Um, see, the, there's a the multitude of things going on. The first thing is being away from home could be quite difficult on family because the kids don't go to school until the start of September. So they're sort of boxed in in the house because um, basically April doesn't drive and the two kids could be a bit of a job when I'm not there. Um, well, they're just a handful. So it's one of the reasons I want to go home back to Spain. But the other ones being is work is getting so um, busy now I've got to basically put an exit strategy in it's not set up the way I would like it um, if I ask you to do eight hours driving a, a week for free um, on top of your working week and spend some evenings doing spreadsheets as well um, for a 37 hour 37 and a half hour um, pay you're not really gonna go yeah that's a great idea um, this is why I'm going back off the books, one of, one of the reasons. But the, the predominant one is flexibility. Um, basically, 4th of September, I'm finished work. I've put my notes in, I've quit, boom, that's it. So if I don't work um, for the rest of the winter, I'm not really bothered. Um, now, let's put things in perspective. You know we were going to buy a house, and we've been looking at them. And I sat there, and I'm sitting there looking and one of my big worries was getting boxed in the same way everybody else does you know you get the house and then everything starts to revolve around money i don't like it um but then i sat and looked with the growth in the spanish economy it's growing but you've also got greece pulling the eu down so I'm sitting there thinking, well, from an investment point of view, there is money in Spain, but the only money is in turning them into rentals. There's no money in actually buying to sell on later. There's a reason for that. It's the same as the Philippines. You've got all these houses that are empty, houses, villas, chalets, whatever. I mean, thousands upon thousands of them, bank foreclosures, etc. They're everywhere. Um, but what have you got going on? new developments, new developments with in-house financing, all the usual bells and whistles that are making it a um, very viable thing for a new new buyer, for a new build, but the existing older stuff, um, I think the market ain't gonna shift that much. And then I sat and thought, well, I, I've got to put down 45% um, roughly. 45% is about 24, 26,000 euros. I've got 20,000 euros come September the 4th, but I thought, you know what? I'd rather spend the time with the family. I'd rather take time off work. I'd rather give myself some space rather than box myself in. Now, in some ways it may seem a bit counterproductive to go, hang on a minute, so I'm not buying a place now. I didn't say that. I'm not buying it right now. There's, there's a difference because with me in Spain, uh, firstly, I get all the winter with my family. Secondly, I can build some more uh, stuff online and etc. Because the kids are going to be in school, which means my home time is actually my time. Um, because before, I couldn't do anything in the house because it's a two bedroom flat. Um, I go up, up on the roof for a bit of peace and quiet, you know. Um, it's great having the kids around, but for working, it's impossible, uh, it really is. So from that point of view, having the kids at school, it's just opened up a whole new opportunity. Work-wise, other opportunities have come up. Um, I've been approached today from another large company, well, Interserve. Um, uh, Carillion also have other opportunities that people are approaching me to do as well um, so the work side isn't really an issue because I'd rather do three months take a month off do three months take a month off and actually enjoy life you know financially I can take three months a year off and it has no financial impact on me whatsoever due to the high rates of tax we pay in the UK but on the positive side if I take time off and develop stuff 
uh, for April, her mother-in-law, etc. My global income isn't taxed in the UK. So that time off, even if it just made a hundred dollars a month extra, is actually worth it because I can just leave that running on its own. So what's happening now? Well, I'm busy working on a project. I've got a hospital that I'm surveying, which will run me right up till the 4th of September, which is a Friday. Um, and then on the 5th, I'll be on the flight back to Spain. Um, from there, I'm not really fussed for this year at all. If I didn't do a lot this year, I'm not fussed. We've got 20,000 euros in the bank. Um, there's a demand for my work. Uh, I would like to invest a bit of time myself in improving my skill sets. Um, I don't have the time while work's running. Um, and I can see gaps in some of my knowledge. Not knowledge as in technical knowledge, um, but I know there's better processes to do it. It's a bit like um, being trained on Windows 98 and somebody's uh, coming with Windows 7. You know, it's that, that's what I'm talking about. You can still do it, but there's faster ways of doing it. But I need to sit and upgrade my training. And this is actually, some of you will actually find that useful. Reinvest in yourself if a company doesn't. As simple as that. Stop, take a pause, and upgrade your training. You know when people become obsolete, a lot of it is because they haven't adapted. And a lot of the time they're not adapting because the company didn't do it for them. Um, government organizations are notorious for it. Um, because their expectation is they'll be spoon fed their entire life. Um, that's why a lot of people drop into these jobs for 30 years, just sit there until retirement. I can't do it, but the problem they have is they've, a lot of time, reality is they've never lived in the real world. Um, all the pensions, everything are sort of heavily used, unionized organizations that basically deal with everything for them. So when they do retire, they're, they've normally paid their mortgage and everything else off because they're the sort of people that have just gone through life from school into the same job and just plodded on. Nothing wrong with it if that's what people want to do. But the point being is that they didn't upgrade their training. So later on, when somebody decides to, decides to phase them out, they're an easy target because their training was 1997. So what's, what's this going to mean for the blog? Well, well, the vlog. Um, first thing is going to be a lot more stuff on Spain. Um, there's stuff I've been doing that you're not aware of. Uh, for example, uh, this week arrived uh, one of those cycle buggies for the kids. So now they'll be towed behind my bike. Last month I bought my wife a mountain bike. I'm going to be buying a mountain bike this month. And basically the family's then mobile. Um, this means that we'll tour around Spain a bit more. Um, we'll start local obviously and then later on we'll, we'll put the bikes in the back of the car. Take the car to say Mercia or somewhere and do a bit further afield. So it's gonna be a bit, a bit of an interesting uh, scenario because it's gonna be something unique to be doing around Spain for us, you know, um, which will be good for the kids as well. You know, they, they'll be there with it in the back. But also I got them, uh, a, lot of the, a lot of the kids are quite young. I come across these the other day, which I thought were a really good bargain. Um, these were $34.99 and now $17.49. They're uh, basically eight megapixel cameras. The waterproof, uh, pretty shockproof. Comes with a memory card, comes with a battery. For the kids, it keeps them out of mischief, but also they're good for taking around with us. Um, so, as you can see, I spent a lot of time developing the family stuff because. When I'm working, I'm so um, engrossed in work. This is why I'm changing the way I live. Um, there was something interesting that came up yesterday. Um, I left work at quarter to five. Now, bear in mind, I've been on site um, probably about eight, nine hours. 
Now, I didn't have lunch, didn't have a break. I just worked all the way straight through. Um, and the reason I left at quarter to, quarter to five is the, the relationship I currently have is basically a nine to five working with the company. Um, there is a bit of flexibility in there, but this, the actual organization I'm working for at the moment, there is no flexibility. Everybody goes at half four, so five o'clock, I'm gone. And the guy I was talking to on the phone as I was going out to the car was saying, that's unusual for you. And he's right. He's right. Because normally, um, I would be like still there. Um, so, well, I might still be there five, six o'clock, but I'd go back to the hotel and still be working on the spreadsheets up till like midnight. Um, but those days are gone because there's a difference between being respected for what you do and people assuming you'll just do it as such that relationship is now in a scenario where I do my working hours as requested um, they already get an extra because I don't have a lunch I might like grab a bottle of water or something during the day but pretty much I'm just working straight through so the company already gains at least 45 minutes a day if not an hour and a half um, because I have no downtime but then all the stuff in the hotel and that's gone. I don't. When I go back to the hotel now, um, I'll call my wife, I'll call um, other people in the same business, but we're talking about stuff that's not actually related to work anymore, where before we'd actually have that constant interaction about what we're doing. Um, all that's changing. But this is about pulling your life back. Um, and that's what I'm doing. You probably notice I look quite tired. It's because... Um, I drove back last night and working home today. Um, driving from Middlesbrough to Worcester is a four hour drive each way. So Monday morning, I drive four hours back. Um, bizarrely, the company assumes you would do that for free. That's all changed. Um, it's not contractual. It's just assumed you can be bullied into it. So, okay, if they want to do that, that's fine. But I'm not doing it, and if I take it to the tribunal, they're welcome to, because I know who will win the case. But I'm not trying to be negative on that stuff, it's quite simply, I'm getting my life back. Um, because when I went into this, the setup was very different from what I was looking at when I first come back. Um, the gate posts have moved, uh, sorry, goal posts have moved on a regular basis within work. Um, it's just the way it is. I mean, corporations are notorious for um, abusing people where they can. Uh, the difference is I won't put up with it. I'm not going to sit there and cry about it or argue or whatever. There is no point. A lot of these people, um, the phrase yes men uh, springs to mind, do not even understand it because they're yes men. They're may have reached a position within a company purely because they say yes to everything. As such, they get uh, bullied around into doing whatever they're told, working long hours, etc. For, for very little praise, little bit, little respect, etc. But where's the positive side of it? Well, the reality is there isn't any. Because they'll do that until the retirement will die. Um, the mortality rate in this sort of industry is probably about 55, you know, the average death. Um, so why do it? But, you know, I'm just saying, you know, my personal opinion, why? It's no benefit to you. Um, if a company needs three people to do a job and you're doing it for, for the same rate as one person, but you're working the same hours as three, then a winner is the company. Because when they do kill you, they can care less. Um, but that's my personal opinion. Um, but I know many of you out there have worked for large companies before and you know you become a barcode, you become a number, you're, you're a part of the matrix. Um, but I have nothing against that, people choosing that way of life, but it's not for me. That's why I go external, because I go on the clock. When I go, okay, this is my rate, this is for 7.5 hours, or this is my rate per hour, they watch the clock themselves because they don't want to be spending more money than they have to. When they're not 
uh, when you're salaried, you have, they couldn't care less. And that's the funny thing, because on this side, as a contractor, they don't do it. They have more respect for you. They won't overspend because they don't want to overspend. Um, so the reality is they don't. They don't abuse you because financially um, it costs them money. But if you work for the company and do it, who cares? You just do as you're told. You're a number. Um, but as you see, I'm not negative. I, you know, I don't feel negative. I just say it as it is. You know, that's me. I'm very blunt, very open, very straight. Uh, you know, if somebody says to me, did you say that about? Yeah, I did. You know, because at the end of the day, I just say it as it is. Um, I think if more people did, we'd, all, we'd have a better world. <laughs> Um, instead of people saying one thing to one person and something else to another. But anyway, babbling on. Spain will be a more interesting thing coming up. Um, I'm going to continue doing the Philippines videos because I've got I've found a load of my old material um, that I'm going to go over. You'll suddenly see a huge churn of videos coming out very soon uh, as I go over stuff that I discussed over the last X amount of years of my life in the Philippines, but obviously I didn't have this media before. But I have no problem with like hammering the videos on a conversation on each piece um, because I think people need to know, they'll find it useful. Um, but anyway, this is my update. It's already nearly 20 minutes long. My apologies, uh, 17th of the 7th, 2015. Thanks for watching. Yeah.